Okay, uh, we're glad to know you're still there. It's the breakfast on uh, Plus TV Africa. I am Nyamgul Agaji, and I'm here with Kofi Battels. And uh, we're now going to talk a little bit about sports. And Wale Agbede is here to talk with us. Wale, good morning. Good morning, Yango. Okay. Uh, great to join you guys on the breakfast this morning. It's good to have you. Well, uh, look how Wade is talking tough. Yes, he was a great player in his time. And when he played under-17 as well, it was great. But he's talking tough. Do you think the chances of the under-17 uh, at this Africa Cup of Nations are the way Nduka is putting them? Or there are things that need to be done for that to come to fruition? Well, I mean, uh, he's talking tough because... Uh, he, I mean, if, if, there, if there's a coach in Nigeria who has achieved some level of success at this level, uh, Unduka has to be one of the names that would be mentioned. Um, he was part of the crew that won gold in 2013 in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, when they on the 17th, that's the golden eagles of Nigeria, were crowned uh, champions of the world. Don't forget also that uh, Nigeria's on the 17th national team are the most successful cadet team uh, in, in, in the world. You know, so... Uh, there's a long line of history of successes with this team, uh, and he's he's just ex exhibiting a lot of confidence in the boys that they have right now. Uh, there's been questions about their age, uh, and Cap has instructed that uh, once they get to Algeria, that MRI scans are you know are done for the players. Uh, but regardless of of you know whatever issues might come up with that, uh, I think the Cap body has proven himself to be one of the best youth coaches in Nigeria. Uh, and if he's talking tough about Nigeria's chances uh, leading up to this competition, and of course, uh, hopefully the World Cup in Peru later in, in the year, uh, I think that I am inclined uh, to agree with him uh, and to, to believe that uh, they, they already have, you know, their, their recipe for success uh, with the Golden Eaglets. Uh, for the Golden Eaglets, uh, it's an opportunity for some of the younger players who are just making their way uh, into the national team for to make a name for themselves. Uh, it's an opportunity uh, for Nigeria and, of course, the NFL, you know, to spotlight uh, some new players whom they would blend into uh, the national team structure and, of course, uh, the football structure in Nigeria generally. Uh, one of the biggest issues uh, that uh, we've always had with all the successes we've had at the Golden Neglects level uh, is the fact that uh, there isn't any uh, developmental structure uh, that has been put in place. Uh, and you know, you can talk tough about tournaments. You can talk about, uh, we're going to win this tournament. Uh, we're going to bamboozle everybody and come back with gold. Uh, but you see, these competitions are not necessarily set up for, for winning per se. Uh, these competitions are set up to, you know, to to bring these young lads to the fore, to, to expose them to competition football, expose them to some level of professionalism uh, in terms of their training, their preparation, uh, the quality of the matches and the competition. Uh, but in Nigeria, it's always about winning, winning. And maybe that's the only uh, uh, sore point that I picked from Unduka Ogbadi's statement because, look, you don't necessarily have to win these competitions. It's good to win, uh, but how well are you developing these talents? What's the structure on ground uh, to put these guys in good stead in preparation uh, for the next stage in their careers? Yeah, because I was going to ask about that because uh, we have fantastic Keda uh, performance as it is, and you've just said that in the whole world we have the most success than any other nation. And I wonder why we still struggle in the senior team when we have a good, a good foundation, as it were. What goes on? What happens? What, what is wrong with our football system in Nigeria that cannot translate into making a very formidable national team at the senior level? Well, if we were going, to, if we were to go into this this morning, young girl, then uh, we'll probably have to do the show all day uh, because <laughs> uh, I mean the problems are so multifaceted that uh, it's almost it's almost impossible to um, to dissect them in, in, in a little bit of time because look, uh, the, the issues are, are so many. There's corruption. There's just basically negligence, ignorance of the fact that football is a big business. Football is a billion dollar business that uh, needs a lot more attention, a lot more care, a lot more structure, and of course a lot more planning. And in Nigeria, uh, it's always fire brigade, uh, fire brigade approach effect about it, uh, to competitions like this. And of course, the win at all cost mentality, uh, which is one of the reasons why you see issues of age cheats uh, and the like, because we just want to win competitions. We do not understand that at this level, the progression of these players into their senior careers 
not just with the Super Eagles, but also in their club professional careers, is paramount and should be the number one focus. Uh, but we just want to win at all costs. And like I said, uh, that's the only sore point for me uh, with the comments of the coach Nduka Kaupade uh, leading up to the beginning of this tournament. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on the chances of um, the Golden Eaglets, you know, first game up on April 30 against Zambia, they play uh, Morocco and South Africa. And their, their counterparts are the higher Keda. We saw what happened in the uh, African tournament. So what are your thoughts uh, on their chances? And with um, the captain of the Super Eagles, Ahmed Musa, uh, promising a mouth-watering 500,000 naira per goal scored at uh, the uh, under-17 AFCON, do you think that will uh, enhance the fortunes and make them perform better? Well, maybe. Um, again, I don't really agree with the approach. Uh, I mean, sometimes these these things are over incentivized, uh, and it could it could it could lead to problems. But yeah, fair enough. I mean, Ahmed Musa has, has created a. Ahmed Musa is always supporting teams, well, be it the female teams, uh, be it uh, on the seventeen, on the twenty, on the twenty-three. Uh, he has been a model captain uh, for the senior national team, uh, using his personal money to encourage these boys because we understand that the the welfare you know part of of the responsibilities of the NFL usually like you know he's usually not well taken care of so fair enough i mean fair play to him uh, but our chances going into this tournament i think are really bright uh, at on the 17 level unfortunately there's nothing really to to point towards because these are players that uh, we don't really know uh we haven't seen them play at this level we haven't seen them compete uh, at this level before but same for the opposition also but generally when you look at the trend of how much uh, quality and talent has been shown by players at this age kid up uh, over the years, uh, I think that maybe Morocco might give us some issues uh, when you consider uh, how well Morocco, the Moroccan FA, have paid attention and have invested in youth development football with regards to their players, mm -hmm. with regards to uh, the policies that they set okay. for clubs uh, over there in the Moroccan Bot Botola Ligue, uh, and of course with regards to how much investment they put into youth coaching uh, in the country, uh, maybe they begin to reap the fruits from this competition. Is left to be seen. Uh, but I think Morocco might be an interesting proposition uh, for the Golden Eagles. But generally, uh, Zambia and South Africa, I would expect uh, Nigeria uh, to find it maybe a little bit easier to get results. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wale Agwede, for coming on the show and giving us, giving us insight to what may or may not happen at the uh, AFCON for the under-17. Under Thank you so much for being a part of the show today. All right. Okay. Um, talking about compulsory MRI... Uh, scans. I mean, back in the day when we played school football, they used to use ruler. Yeah. You stand Four and feet then. Nine. Yes, I, I remember <laughs> Al Hassan. Al Hassan was um, in in athletics and school football. He was an all rounder when I got into junior secondary school. By the time I finished, got into senior secondary school, Al Hassan was still playing for the junior secondary school team. Why? Because Al Hassan <laughs> refused to grow tall. And he was scoring goals in left hand and center. Anyway, I think MRI is a good innovation. We have to go. Mm. Um, that's been the size of the package this week uh, on the breakfast. Today is Friday, right? Yeah, today uh -huh. is Friday. Okay. First of all, says I'm in a hurry to, to, you know. And we'll be back on Monday. But uh, please do well to follow us on our social media platforms. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Just simply search for Plus TV Africa. Don't worry if you don't see the Twitter verification tick. Because I was jubilating, thinking we had uh, everything on lockdown. But no thanks to Elon Musk. Um, that may not be there, but just plus TV Africa and you see us. Also on YouTube, the same address, uh, the same name, and a second account, plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Hope you enjoyed uh, this week on Breakfast. My name is Kofi Bartels. Yes, I've been in broadcasting for about 20 years, and I've had one fan that has never, ever left me from Ecom to Calabar to Lagos. He follows me around, listens uh -huh. to me, sees me, and all that, and he just turned 80. Uh, so I'd like to say happy birthday to Mr. E.O. Ojogu, uh, who, was, who we are celebrating today. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. We're praying for you that you have more years to impact your knowledge on us. Bye. Okay. All right. Fantastic way to end the program. <laughs> See you next week.